Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, I am going to give you guys a basic overview of the Cisco 8851 IP phone. Um, I will mainly be covering uh, the important uh, hardware aspects, the important ports, uh, as there are some ports on this device that I have no clue what they do. And then I will be also going over the buttons and the button layout to give you guys a general uh, layout of the device. So on the left side, on the front, and we'll go over the buttons first before I go to the sides and back. Um, on the left side is your handset. And we're going to start on the left of the screen. Uh, we're going to like go to the left of the screen, right of the screen, then under. And then we'll go over the rest of the hard buttons. So on the left side of the screen, you'll see and feel five buttons. Those are your line keys, and actually there's five line keys on the right side of the button also can be used for BLF or presence keys or shared line appearance. Underneath that is your soft keys, and these do update based on the state of the phone, which I will go over a little bit in this video and a little uh, more uh, into it in the next video. Uh, with, um, if you saw my last video, I did show that this does have voice feedback, so I can't really do that. Under the soft keys, you have your back key, your navigation pad, which is up, down, left, right, and then center select, and then there's a release key or end call key. On the left of the uh, keypad, uh, numeric keypad in the middle, uh, this is down below the navigation ring. Uh, this is on the left of the keypad, um, right, not really right next to the three key, but there's a little bit of a gap, but beside on the left of the three key is your voicemail button. And then in the row below that, there is your settings slash applications button, and then your directory button. And under that is your volume bar. Then you have your standard keypad one, one through zero, and then star and pound. On the right of that, um, first row with the key on the right of three is your hold key. Under that to the left, or sorry, yeah, to the right of six is your transfer key. And then on the right of that, still in the same row as number six key on the keypad is your conference key. Under that, um, right next to the Number nine key is your headset button. On the right of that is your speaker button. And then under that, uh, under those two buttons, um, in the last row is your mute key. On the side of the device, there are two little covers. The one um, down below is for an expansion card uh, or a sidecar or expansion module whatever you want to call it, but it helps you, especially if you're a receptionist, have more shared line appearance and presence features and extra quick dial keys, things like that. And then above that is a USB port to facilitate wireless headsets, um, charging your devices, that kind of thing. On the back, um, going with the phone facing away, f or with the front of the f phone facing away from you, so if the back of the phone is facing you, you have your power port, and then most um, important is your Ethernet port. This is what will connect to your network, and I am using a PoE switch, so I have nothing plugged into that. And um, I don't know exactly what the other ports are, and I'm going to put my Olympus down for this here so I can pull it up. And then on the extreme right of the phone is your headset port, and then below that is your handset port. Um, so those are kind of the important ones. There is a PC port on here, but there is another Ethernet port on here that I don't recognize. Like, I don't know what it's for. So um, probably an expansion card as well or something else like that. Um, I'm not sure what the other Ethernet port is, but there is one for the PC as well. Um... This does have, like the Polycom, this does have a physical hook switch. Um, and in the cradle where the handset sits, there is like this rubbery coating so you don't scratch up your device when you're hanging up. 
as you can hear, my voice feedback is on and I do want to go over how to turn it on and off. Um, so let's go ahead and turn it off. Voice feedback off. Okay. So there's two ways to turn it on. Um, one is through the settings, and this may be a little difficult for you if you can't memorize menus or if you're unboxing the phone for the first time. The easiest way to turn on voice feedback is by pressing the select button in the center of the navigation ring three times, and that'll turn on voice feedback, and you will hear the following. Voice feedback on press three times to turn off. So now, we will go over how keys work. So soft keys have a, a double action. So you press once to get it to read, and then you press uh, another time to um, select. So let's I wanted. Let's go through the actual soft keys here. So I'll press them one by one and get it to read them. Redial. So the first one on the left is redial, and there's four soft keys. First one on the left when your phone is idle is redial, and this could be carrier provider specific. Contact. The next one is a soft key for the contacts directory. Do not disturb. You got do not disturb. Menu one. And the menu. Um, this will scroll you to the next page of soft keys, and we'll go over that in a sec. But if we want to do do not disturb, for example, I'm going to press do not disturb. When it somewhat reads it, I'm going to press it again. Do not disturb. Do not disturb set. So it now says do not disturb set. If I want to turn it off. Cancel do not disturb. Cancel do not disturb. So see, you have to click it quite fast. Cancel. Do not disturb. Canceled. But once you know the soft keys, you can just kind of... Do not disturb set. Do not disturb. Canceled. Do that. So now let's go to hit menu twice. Menu. Menu. Do. It says menu two. Now we'll go through the other soft keys. Here, again, this is when the phone is idle. Um, you'll have... Intercom. Intercom. Page. And page. Third soft key does nothing, and then menu, two, menu, one. that takes you back to the main menu. Redial, contact, do not disturb. So now let's go over the settings, and we'll quickly go through the options. Information and settings, one, accessibility. So in the accessibility menu. Accessibility, one, voice feedback. Yeah, on. voice feedback on slash off. We're not going to go over that because, again, the easiest way is to just triple click the navigation ring select button. Two, voice speed. Voice test. speed. Select voice. Three, normal. So I'm actually going to slow this down speed. a little bit normal. for people who have trouble understanding faster speech. Three, voice volume. And then we have voice Five. volume. Two, select so let me four. actually. Accessibility. I can't. Two. Select voice. Three, accessibility. There we go. Information so I hit back. And setting. One, accessibility. Two, recent. Two is where you get to your recents. And these are numbered, so you can type in the numbers for them. So let's say I wanted accessibility. When I'm in this menu, I press 1. Accessibility. 1. And that takes me to it. Information and settings. 1. Accessibility. 2. Recent. So recents, I'm not going to go into this, but this lets you filter through your placed calls, received calls, all calls, missed calls, that kind of thing. 3. Speed dial. 3 is where you can set your speed dial. Uh, that will be another topic for another video. 4. User preferences. 4 is user preferences. We're going to go through all the options in here first before we go into user preferences. Five, Bluetooth. Five is Bluetooth. That is another nice thing with this phone compared to my Yealink, uh, Yealink T31P and my Polycom VVX150. This has Bluetooth, so I can use Bluetooth headsets. I can even use their uh, intelligent proximity feature to take mobile calls on my Cisco um, and to take Cisco calls from Ring Central on my phone, let's say if I didn't have the Ring Central app. So it can be used for a variety of things. Six, network configuration. Six is network configuration. We're not going to go in here because this is just network stuff that even I don't understand half of. Um, so we're not going to go in there, but that's, yeah. Seven, device administration. Seven is device administration. We'll go ahead and go in here again after um, we're done with this. Eight. Status. And eight is status. I'm not going to go in here as there is device sensitive information that I do not want to get out, uh, like my MAC address, my IP address, that kind of thing. So we're going to go into user preferences first. Now, if you remember, it did say four. I could always scroll back up or even wrap around, but I'm just going to hit four. It's just quicker, and it'll take me into that menu, and it will go through every option in that menu, or any of the ones that you may want to set up. User preferences. One. 
Call preferences. Call preferences. So this lets you set your options, like what your voicemail extension is. For example, with um, uh, Telzio, I don't remember what it was. I think it was like star 98 or star 97 or something like that. With Ring Central, it's star 86. So this lets you set it, but because it was provisioned, it took all those settings from their server. Um, let's Call actually go in there. Voicemail. Input field. Asterisk 86. So star 86 is my voicemail. Do not disturb. Off. Do not disturb. That lets you do it if you don't want to use the home screen with the sh uh, soft key. Call waiting. On. Call waiting. You can turn this on and off. That's pretty, you know... It won't send calls straight to voicemail or anything. It, it's pretty self-explanatory. Dial assistance. Um, Dial assistance. I'm actually not sure what that is. Miss call shortcut. Miss um, call shortcut. I usually shut shortcut. this off because that's annoying yes. and it gets in the way of some of the other soft keys. So I disable that by hitting OK and then set twice, which is the second soft key. Voicemail. So that's all User we have in there. Two. Audio preferences. Audio preferences. Audio preferences. Preferred audio device. None. Preferred audio device. This is good if you are constantly using speakerphone or if you're constantly using headsets. Uh, it's especially good if you're using headsets. Um, it will allow you to have it so you don't have to press the headset button every time you get a call or want to place a call. You can just answer and it'll automatically try to go to headset or whatever your medium you want to use is. Side tone. Bye. Side tone. This is a useful feature. Um, pretty much it's like a live monitoring and you can adjust the volume of it and the volume of the side tone judges how much you can hear of yourself through your earpiece. Um, the side tone only works for when you're on handset. Um, so just note with that. Um, I have it set to high cause I do like to hear myself, make sure I'm not clipping or make sure I'm really not, you know, blowing on the mic a lot and things like that. So I did set that to high. Um, but you can set, you can even turn it off if you don't like the monitoring. Uh, it does have tones for when you mute and unmute. So you really don't need the side tone to tell whether you're muted or not with the polycom I did. Microphone gain. Microphone gain. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. You can change your microphone volume. Now, as a note to this is that part does not read. It does not tell you what it's set to. That is one of the shortcomings of the accessibility. Certain things will not read, like changing your screen brightness, changing your microphone gain, and tuning your speaker. Uh, that won't read, but you can always configure those in the web configuration, which I will not be showing um, as, again, uh, there is sensitive information in there that I don't want to get out. So I will not be showing the Cisco web configuration, but it's, it's pretty self-explanatory to go through if you know, if you're even more moderately technical. Microphone test. Microphone test. This will let you test your levels and things like that. I'm not going to go into that. Um, pretty self-explanatory. It lets you record and you can even talk into the mic and it'll show like a little view meter, um, audio graph on your levels and then you can record and play back your audio so you know what it sounds like. Tune speaker. Tune speaker. This will let you tune the profile of your speaker whether you want brighter audio or if you want warmer audio. Um, I have mine set to default. Preferred audio device. None. And we're back to preferred audio device. User preferences. Three. Screen preferences. Screen preferences. We're not going to go into that. That's just screen saver, screen brightness, wallpaper, that kind of thing. Four. Attendant console preferences. Attendant console preferences. I am not sure what that is myself, so we are not going to be going through that. Um, so we'll just skip on past that. Five. Ringtone. 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 We'll go in here with select. So in here, you can't really set a device-wide ringtone. You have to set it per user, per extension. Um, if you only have one extension, you set extension one. You just hit OK and then, you know, go through the list, hit, hit play twice to play it, and then hit you know, select and then hit second soft key, which is set. You hit that twice and it sets. Um, it's two ringtones. So, you know, Chirp I one. can do extension one to extension 10. User preferences one. Call preferences. And that's all we get. Five. Information and So, settings. let's go into administration. administration. One. Set password. Set password. This lets you set your user password for when you log into the web configuration. Two. Date slash time. Date and time. This lets you manually t check or set your time. You can set your time zone, things like that. Three. Language. 
language, okay. English US, uh, and you will only be getting voice feedback with English, no other language, just English. Four, restart. Four will let you reboot the device. Five, factory reset. Five is factory reset, which because it's a rental, I am not allowed to do. Um, because it's already pre-configured how the rental devices are supposed to be configured. Six, profile rule. Profile rule, I'm not sure what that is. Seven, profile account setup. Profile account setup, again, not sure what that is. One, And we're password. back to set password. On screen. So those are the settings for the um, Cisco. So... Um, another thing I'm going to demonstrate here is the state of the phone when you're receiving a call. So I'm going to go ahead and um, go ahead and go to Ring Central and give myself a call. And I'm going to mute my computer here. I'm going to silence this. And the buttons we have are answer, decline, and that's it. So we're gonna hit answer twice. And that did answer the call, so um, you can hear the loop, it's on speakerphone. Now we're gonna go through my soft keys here. Hold. We have hold. End call. And this is while you're in a call. Hold. Hold. End call. And blind transfer. Blind transfer. Menu. And menu. Blind. We're menu. gonna go into the menu. Conference. Let me, let me actually mute that. We have conference. Transfer. Transfer. Park. Park. Menu. And menu. back to menu one. one. Hold. So if I hit hold, hold, as you can hear, I have hold music. And pop, blind transfer. If I do a blind transfer, blind transfer, it'll let me transfer someone without consulting them first if they want to take the transfer. We will be demonstrating all those features like call park and things in another podcast or another video. So I'm going to end this call, and there's two ways to do that, or actually three ways since I'm on speakerphone. If I was on a handset, you know, there would be, you know, two ways. I could hit the end call button or soft key or just hang up the handset. In this case, I can hit the button or soft key or just hit the speaker button. So I'm going to hit the end call button, which is on the right of the navigation ring. On screen. And that did end the call as you hear. Now, making a call on this thing is pretty easy. Now, this is not like the old systems um, where in North America you had to dial nine to dial out if you're in a multi-extension, you know, business commercial phone system. Um, nowadays, usually PBI, or uh, sorry, cloud services, um, VoIP cloud services, or even on-premise VoIP servers are smart enough now to know the difference between an external call a lot of the time and an internal call. Um, so I don't have to dial nine or anything. I can just dial out. So to make a call, and I'll just call myself for this demonstration. Um, I won't be calling myself on numbers. That's an easy way to dox myself and expose my number. So um, I won't be able to, actually I'll be able to uh, make an external call, but it won't be to myself. Um, so let's start with an internal call. So we're just, there's a few ways to do this. You can hit speaker, dial, and then hit the hash key, pound key, or your call soft gear, just wait it out. Or, you know, idle, just type in your number, hit speaker, or pick up the handset, or hit the call soft key. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dial 200, which is my extension. New call, two, zero, zero. And it does read the keypad. Now... Call. My options now that I've typed options. are options, delete. call, delete, cancel. and then cancel. Phone so let's, Contact. that did time out. So let's you give, here. give here. myself a call here. Please call while I try to connect Gabriel you. J. Gabriel J. And as you can see, see, I did, I did get, the get the call and I did pick up the handset to do this. Or um, when the call connected, I picked up the handset. On screen. So that pretty much concludes the dem um, basics of um, using the Cisco 8851. Um, I will be demonstrating a little more in depthly, um, like call park, uh, warm, uh, warm and blind transfers, um, things like that. Um, 
let's actually look at how to do voicemail. So as I said, on the left of the th one key, there's your message button or voicemail button. We'll hit that. Welcome. Please enter your PIN and then press pound. I'm going to dial in my PIN. Hash key. You have 19 saved messages. To listen to your messages, press 1. For account administration, press 2. Please enter your selection now. And on screen. So that is how you access your voicemail. As you did notice on speakerphone, whenever I was dialing, you know, um, my PIN in, it didn't actually play the DTMF tones through the speaker. That is the one other difference, too, between my Polycom Yealink and the Cisco. The Polycom and Yealink just play your normal DTF tones, no, DTMF tones, no matter what state the phone is in. Um, minus idle. This, when you're on speaker, it will play just a generic beep. That is to protect your, um, you know, privacy or people's privacy if you're dialing in a pin for your voicemail or your conference bridge or if you're dialing out a person's number people can't guess what you're dialing because some people are very good at identifying dtmf tones now when you're on handset that's a complete or even headset that is a completely different story it does play dtmf but those are pretty much the basics of the cisco 8851 just kind of a short introduction to it like i said um you know once voice feedback is really a godsend um because the polycom or the a link or most other brands don't have that um so i had to have sighted people tell me the layout of my soft keys depending on the state of the phone and quite frankly they change so much that you can't it's hard to memorize all of them it, it really is so i'm kind of grateful that um cisco did team with the american Cons Council of the Blind, or for the blind, whatever it is. I, I know a lot of these things are sensitive about how you say the name and things like that, but I don't give a shit. Um, I'm kind of thankful in a way, though, that they did partner with them and made the 8800 series accessible. So it didn't matter. 8811, you know, 41, 51, 45, 55, 65, 61... Most of the 8800 series have the accessibility. Um, other models may not. All I know is the 8800 is their only series, but that might have changed. Not sure. Um, but yeah, that is the Cisco 8851. Uh, and we'll see you guys in the next one.